Ah, yes. And we are welcome. And this is a Sunday where we're going to look at acceptance. And I'm calling you to see how acceptance can be a very valuable tool on our individual spiritual journey. And we're going to look and see if acceptance is the answer. I think it is. Uh, and I am consulting the acceptance guru, uh, Dr. Paul. Dr. Paul and his wife, Max, used to attend. Owen and I had a video and production company years ago, and we got a contract with a tour operator who led, led sober vacations. And so he'd take over whole club meds, and hundreds of people in AA and Al-Anon would converge on a club med and eat and drink and be married, drink sodas, um, and be merry. And Dr. Paul was always at these events. He's, he was a dear man. He's passed now. But he wrote an important passage in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous called Acceptance. And this is on page 417 in the fourth edition of the big book. And so let's see if he really has something to say about it. And acceptance is the answer to all my problems today. When I am disturbed, it is because I find some person, some place, thing, or situation, some fact of my life unacceptable to me. And I can find no serenity until I accept that person, place, thing, or situation as being exactly the way it's supposed to be at this moment. You get what he's talking about? That absolutely everything in our life is there because it's there. And it could be it's there to be an opportunity for us to step over the issue, the problem, and embrace a different aspect in our life. He goes on to say, nothing, absolutely nothing happens in God's world by mistake. Until I could accept my alcoholism, I could not stay sober. Unless I accept my life completely on life's terms, I cannot be happy. I need to concentrate not so much on what needs to be changed in the world as what needs to be changed in me and my attitude. Wow. Now, we all have different issues. For Dr. Paul, it's alcoholism. Our core issues might be loving too much, gambling too much, eating too much. There's a whole lot of too much. And we've all got stuff. We all have issues that, that gnaw at us, the ones that are hardest for us to deal with. But if we're going to be happy, if we're going to have some con contentment, we're going to embrace some serenity in our lives. We need to accept that what is, is. And by accepting it, we can open ourselves to creativity. As long as we're not accepting something, as long as we're in the act of resistance, that's where all of our life energy goes, is in the resistance. But as soon as we accept, we let go. Finally, let go. And then, in that moment, we can choose differently. We can open up to our creativity. We can say yes to life. Where just a second ago, we were in the, no I don't want it to be this way. Well, it is this way. 
If it is, it is. And arguing with reality doesn't bring us any joy. We can be right about it for a while, but it's very painful. Thank you, Dr. Paul. And acceptance is the answer. I turn to Eckhart Tolle, a great teacher and author, says, accept, then act. Accept, then act. Whatever the present moment contains, accept it as if you had chosen it. Always work with it, not against it. Make it your friend and ally, not your enemy. This will work miraculously, transform your whole life. It transforms my life. I've had a practice now for a while where three to five minutes every hour, I stop and observe what is. Right now, I'm standing on the platform looking at you, feeling relaxed and with a great joy of being with you. I recognize that there's a little tension in my shoulder, that there's thoughts going through my head, that I can hear breathing. I could hear Deb pick up the water bottle. It's just what is. Being aware of what is, just as it is, it might be tension, it might be pain, it might be all kinds of things, but it's giving me the opportunity to be in acceptance. And guess what? By doing this simple practice, I find that I have chosen to be where I am. And by making that choice, by looking at life as a blessing, as an opportunity, and believe me, it's easy to look at the stuff we love and accept it. It's easy to look at the, the bonus you just got and be in acceptance. But isn't it the challenging things in life, the issues in life, the, oh, the realities that causes pain and strife. Sometimes that's who we're looking at in the mirror. Sometimes it's who we're married to. Sometimes it's who we've spawned in life. But acceptance is the answer. George Orwell may be an unlikely uh, person to put up on the screen, but a great author. And he says an important thing about, hap about acceptance. Happiness can exist only in acceptance. I think it really is spot on. And what is happiness? Happiness is it's present. We don't have, we don't, we can't live in the happiness of the past. We've had happiness. And we may or may not have happiness in the future. So happiness is always in the present moment because we feel safe. We feel trusting. We, we have faith. We have hope. We have energy. We have life. And that gives us happiness. And so our happiness comes and goes, but it's always available to us when we are in acceptance. In truth, when we accept, we let go. Let go of our resistance. Let go of needing to know how to solve a problem. I've discovered that all I need to do is decide what I want which is hard enough. Just decide what I want, and then God knows how. I give what I want to God, then the details work out. So 
So I don't even know how, I don't ever have to know how something's going to work. That's God's job. And God has skills. Ever met him? Great skill. Acceptance brings the open possibility of happiness. Anyone want more happiness? I do. Dean Jackson, an uh, author, and he's got a great blog that goes on, and I love this. Accepting the now, just as it is, does not mean you're resigning yourself to the circumstances always being as they are. When you accept this moment just as it is, even if your ego doesn't like it, you discover that the energy you once directed to resistance can be channeled into creativity. I love that. Just reading that gives me some joy and happiness because it puts my life into the driver's seat of accepting what is. And for those isms, those challenges, those issues that give us the most challenges in our life, sometimes our ego doesn't want to let go, doesn't like it. Well, I let my ego say what it needs to say, and I say, thank you for sharing. I'm going to accept it anyway. Because it's the only way I find peace. And I can get caught up just like any other human being in the stuff. And the fears and the disappointments and, oh, you let me down and, oh, that's not the way it's supposed to work and I want it my way. Ever felt like that? Yeah. That's being human. It's just being human. But if we really identify with the present moment, we can really identify with our spiritual nature that has all the power that creates universes. Has the power to transform our dry, parched land into a fertile place where anything can grow. where we can wake up, look in the mirror, and say, good morning. I love you just the way you are. And I accept what is, because I'm sick and tired of resisting. I'm just putting it down and opening my heart to a new way of living, where my spiritual track is accepting. And there's something about acceptance we must come to accept. And that's, I turn back to Dr. Paul, and he says, acceptance has to be repeated over and over and over again with every new situation and circumstance. It isn't a destination. It's a continuous process, a journey, a philosophy, a way of life. It would be great if we could accept all that stuff once and be done with it, but then we wouldn't have life, would we? Life is change. It's the only thing we can truly count on is change. And with that, we can practice it. And then practice it again. And then practice it again. Look what else we need to practice again and again and again. is forgiveness. But if you think about it, forgiveness and acceptance are two sides of the same coin. 
I would, when I forgive, I need to accept what is. And that doesn't mean I condone it. That doesn't mean I think that it's right or should continue that way. But arguing with what is isn't giving me strength. It's not giving me peace. And every spiritual practice comes to the same idea of it's an inside job and I get to do it over and over and over again. And that's good. Because acceptance is the answer. And I bring this talk to a close by coming to this powerful prayer. The serenity prayer is used by millions of people worldwide. It, it's actually a part of a longer prayer by Reinhold neighbor who wrote it and this particular verse speaks to everything that we looked at today. If you know it, or if you don't, let's read it together. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. We have everything we need to let go. We have everything we need to move forward by accepting. Accepting what is. So you might join me by practicing three to five minutes every hour of just Accepting what is. And recognizing that we wouldn't be right there if on some level we didn't choose it. And let go of the attachment. And maybe, just maybe, accept the happiness and the joy of living. Thank you.